Want to know how to wire a double switch? You can easily do it yourself. You can use a double switch to turn on and off two lights, a light in a ceiling fan, a light in an outlet, or even an overhead light in a garbage disposal, all with the same switch. In this video, David, who is a licensed master electrician, shows how to wire a double switch. Hi there, this is David and Marcy Lynn, the Just a Little Further crew, and we're here with another how-to video. Hope you enjoy it. This is the double switch we'll be using. It combines two switches in the space of one, making it easy to add a switch to an existing wall box. For demonstration purposes, I'll wire this double switch to turn on and off two different lights. On this side are two terminals for the incoming power connection. The two terminals are jumpered together with this little tab. In most cases, we'll leave the jumper in place because usually the lights will be powered by the same circuit breaker. Occasionally, we'll want to remove the jumper. Say, for example, we're using one switch to control a garbage disposal and one to control the lights over a sink. The garbage disposal would probably be on its own circuit breaker, separate from the kitchen lights. In this case, we'd connect the power for the disposal to one terminal and the power for the lights to the other, then break the jumper by twisting it using a small screwdriver. In this video, we're powering the two lights from the same circuit breaker, so we'll leave the jumper in place. On this side, you can see the two terminals for the wires that will connect to the lights and the green ground connection. Before we start, let's turn off the power. The usual way is to find the breaker box and hope that the circuits are labeled. If they aren't, we'll have to turn the breakers off one at a time until we find the right one. I've seen some electricians pop the circuit breaker by shorting the black wire to ground, but this isn't a good idea. While breakers can be turned on and off thousands of times using the switch, they will quite likely stop working after only a few short circuits. Before proceeding, we want to make sure that power is actually off. There are three common ways of checking power. One is to use a non-contact circuit tester like this one. It beeps when it comes close to an energized wire, even an insulated wire. It's a marvelous invention and a very useful tool if you'll be doing much more electrical work. It'll cost you somewhere around $14 to $20 or so. The next method is to use a multimeter. This is a very inexpensive meter, oh, maybe $15, that I carry in my tool bag. Set the meter to an AC voltage setting of at least 120 volts. Touch one probe to the black wire and one to the ground wire and check to ensure the meter reads zero volts. Just in case the circuit was miswired, I also check the voltage between the white and the ground wire. The third method is another technique I learned from an old electrician friend long ago. It's one I certainly don't recommend, but it does work. Put one finger on the ground wire and another on the black wire. If the circuit is energized, you'll get a rather unpleasant shock. Just make sure you're not standing in a puddle of water, that you're wearing insulated shoes, and you aren't holding onto a water pipe with your other hand, and the shock will most likely be non-lethal. Again, even though my friend lived to a ripe old age, I don't recommend this method. If you're running wire to a new lamp, you'll need to strip the sheathing off the end of the Romex or NM wire where it enters the wall box. Usually about six inches is the right length. Many electricians use a knife or box cutter. Run the knife down the center of the Romex and the sheathing can be peeled off. Just be careful not to let the knife get close to the edge or it'll nick the insulation on the white or black wires. My preferred method is to use this tool, an NM cable ripper. It costs about three or four dollars online or at Lowe's and makes it quite easy to cut the sheathing without damaging the individual conductors or your fingers. Simply slide the ripper up the cable, press it together, and slide it back off the cable. It makes a nice cut down the center of the sheathing. Once the sheathing is sliced, peel it off along with any of the paper insulation lining the ground wire and cut it all off. 
push the wire into the wall box until about a half an inch or so of the sheathing extends into the box. I use a wire stripper to remove about three quarters of an inch of insulation. An inexpensive crimping tool will work. This is 14-2 wire, so I'll insert the wire into the hole mark 14, tighten the handles, and pull the insulation off. For a few dollars more, you can get a much better wire stripper. The white wires in our circuit are the common wires and we need to join them together. I'll twist them together with pliers and once they're secure, I'll lock them in place with an insulated wire nut. Wire nuts are color-coded by size. A yellow wire nut is the right size for the three number 14 wires we're using. Once the nut is tight, an optional extra security measure is to wrap the wire nut with electrical tape. We're done now with the white wire so they can be tucked back into the box. The black wires are the hot wires. I remember these by thinking of the black death. The black wires are the ones that could kill you. Nothing to worry about if you shut the power off and you check that the circuit was de-energized. Next, I'll strip off about three quarters of an inch of insulation off the ends of each of the black wires. Here's our switch again. We use one switch to control the right light and the other to control the left light. This is the wire that provides power from the circuit breaker and it should be connected to the line side of the switch. I'll form a loop at the end of it. This side of the switch is the line side. It's the side that has the two terminals jumpered together. The loop should always be placed under the screw terminal in a clockwise direction. That way, as the screw is tightened, the loop will get tighter rather than looser. Use needle nose pliers to make the wire tight around the screw, then use a big screwdriver to tighten the terminal screw down tight. Now I'm going to form a loop in the end of the black wire that leads to the right hand lamp. Then I'll fit this loop over the screw terminal for the lower switch. Now I'll repeat the process for the black wire that leads to the left hand lamp. Next, I combine the ground wires. 
There's a number of different ways to do this. I use a special wire nut that's green and has a hole in the middle. I cut two of the ground wires so that one of them is about three inches longer than the others. Then I use pliers to twist them all together. The longer ground wire is inserted into the hole in the wire nut, then the nut is slid down over the twisted wires and tightened. Make a loop in the end of the single copper wire and place it under the green screw. Give the wire a squeeze with your pliers, then tighten the screw down. This is another optional step. Many electricians make a couple of wraps of electrical tape around the terminals on the side of the switch. It's pretty unlikely, but it is possible that a ground wire could come in contact with the terminals holding the black wires as the switch is pushed into the junction box, and wrapping them with tape prevents this possibility. Push the switch into the junction box and tighten the mounting screws. An electric screwdriver will speed things up. Finally, we'll attach the faceplate. Be careful not to tighten the screws too much. It's really easy to crack it. Now for the big test. Turn power back on and let's see if it works. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please click on the like button below. If you want to see more of our how-to, travel, sailing, road trips, and trekking videos, subscribe to our YouTube channel. We also blog and update our website regularly, so check us out at www.justalittlefurther.com. Bye for now.